This is my first foray into the, I, I call it the Machu Picchu protocol, that, uh, Greg, so uh, we'll see how well I can uh, kind of live up to, to the standard. <clears throat> so uh, Epiphora is basically defined as overflow tiering. That's when the tiers flow off the edge of the eyelid margin onto your cheek. And often I'll see this coming as soon as the patient walks into the door, they have a handkerchief in, my, in their hand and they're dabbing on their eyelids. So I know Epiphora is almost immediately uh, what's on the agenda that day. A uh, lacrimal system is essentially a faucet and drain system. Uh, the secretory system is uh, the um, accessory lacrimal glands and the main lacrimal gland. And the drain is the puncta, cannuliculi, lacrimal sac, and duct. And epiphora is essentially the overpowering of the faucet uh, of, of the drain. The accessory lacrimal, lacrimal glands are the lacrimal uh, glands of Krauss and Wolfring. Krauss is a little higher up in the fornix. Uh, the Wolfring is at the top of the tarsus. And these are uh, the glands that are responsible for basal secretion. And you, we generally don't really think much about them. The main lacrimal gland is responsible for um, the noxious ocular, uh, the reflexive steering, where you have some sort of noxious stimuli, whether it's an eyelash or a foreign body or some sinus or nasal disease or um, any emotional stimuli. And this is uh, the orbital lobe uh, is the larger one. The smaller one is a lacrimal lobe, uh, the palpebral lobe, which has the ductules coming off of it. And they're responsible for the, the uh, aqueous layer of the tear film, but the tear film is actually three layers. The mucus layer produced by the goblet cells, you have plenty of these. Um, the aqueous layer is the lacrimal uh, uh, glands, and then the, um, the oily layer is the meibomian glands, and these are often, often the problem. So we have to figure out, is there a hypersecretion problem? Is there something causing irritation in the surface of the eye, like trichiasis, or um, like a frank entropion, or ectropion for that matter, or is there some other inflammatory condition or infection uh, component to the epiphora? And here's an, an example of a uh, hypersecretion due to inflammation caused by rosacea. And the mimobian glands are, are, are blocked, and the tears evaporate too quickly, and there's a reflexive mechanism of producing more tears to compensate for that. Moving to the, the actual nasolacrimal anatomy and the drainage system, uh, it starts with the punctum at the eye eyelids, upper and lower, and then onto the cannuliculi, uh, to the lacrimal sac, and then down through the bone and into the duct, and uh, the valve of Hasner opens up in, underneath the uh, inferior turbinate. This really important slide shows the lacrimal pump system, which is really the orbicularis oculi muscle contracting and, and relaxing. The contraction causes a closure of the eyelid, and that actually pulls the sac open and draws fluid from the ocular surface onto it. And as you open up the eye, the sac compresses, pushes the tears down into the, um, into the nose. Um, so in part of this examination, you have to examine the lacrimal, um, the eyelids and the punctum, make sure there's nothing covering the punctum, the, the punctum's in good apposition to the globe. You push on the sac to see if there's any reflux out of it. And then the kind of the gold standard, uh, the workhorse of our evaluations and pro probing and irrigation. With the probing, you're advancing the, the probe through the canaliculus and you want to get all the way to the lacrimal bone and feel a hard stop. If you feel there's a soft stop and, or the soft tissue kind of accordions, that means there's something long, wrong with the canaliculus and it's preventing the probe from advancing directly into the uh, sac. On the irrigation part, basically um, you squirt down one canaliculus and see where it ends up. If it ends up in the throat, obviously that's great. If it squirts out the top or if you're doing the top it squirts out the bottom, there's something distal that's blocked off. Usually the duct, but it can be the internal common canaliculus as well. And here are some, um, some examples of uh, obstruction. This is in a um, pediatric population where they usually present with epiphora and matting, but sometimes can uh, lead to an acute dacryocystitis. The valve of Hasner hasn't opened up yet, and with um, the treatment for this is essentially a massage, where you massage up from an up to down from the medial canthus down towards the, um, the tip of the nose, and do this a few times a day, and hopefully with the pressure will pop open that valve of Hasner, allow drainage. If it doesn't, you move on to a probing. If that doesn't work, then you'll move on to a more surgical uh, DCR approach. 
Canaliculitis is an infection uh, of the uh, canaliculus. Usually this is caused by the actino actinomyces um, organism. And they form what's called the sulfur granule. It actually kind of smells pungent. And it's basically these, these particles can, you know, kind of sticking together with the concretions um, and form this an incision and drainage, um, often in the office setting, um, is, is enough. Um, to uh, slice the, basically slice open the, the canaliculus from can punctum all the way to the, um, medially towards the medial canthus. You don't even have to repair it. You, you curette that um, right out of there and then it heals by secondary intention. No issue with epiphora. Have to stop once. Uh, acute dacryo cystitis, usually a preceptal um, staloid lilus, and it's quite painful, exquisitely painful. Um, usually topical uh, oral antibiotics uh, can, can halt this, um, but it can progress into an acute abscess which will need drainage either uh, in the clinic or uh, as this patient had done, and they're so happy after you pop that, pop that open, it's so painful beforehand. Or you can move on and do an acute dacryocystal rhinostomy, um, and that's been done more and more frequently with relatively good success despite the, the active inflammation. Most commonly, though, it presents with uh, chronic dacryocystitis, uh, where um, there's a painless swelling at the inner canthus. You push on it. You have that reflux of mucus. Um, and the treatment, uh, definitive treatment, is DCR. You can treat these uh, medically, but they will come back over and over again. Um, and the, the way we do this externally is through uh, basically a, an incision on the nasal sidewall, a few millimeters uh, uh, medial to the um, medial canthus open up the, um, the lacrimal sac, remove the lacrimal bone, make an incision in the nasal mucosa, suture those flaps together and put probes in and let them sit there for about six months. My final slide is actually a video and I'm gonna um, not stick to the Machu Picchu protocol. Um, can you start that video for me? This is a quick synopsis of a, a, a endoscopic DCR which you guys um, can all do quite easily, probably better than I can. Uh, make an incision, um, raise your, your mucosal flap uh, with a 15 blade, elevate it off, the, off of the bone um, with an elevator, then use um, scissors to kind of morselize it to allow the micro to easily um, remove that nasal mucosal flap. Um, then uh, dilate the punctum. Now this is a, a retinal light pipe, which is really nice because once you turn off the endoscope light, you can perfectly see where your lacrimal sac is. Um, and you can then use your ronger to initiate your um, osteotomy of the lacrimal bone. Um, as you get up high, and I, this is where Greg and I always, I always tell Greg, go higher, go higher. You gotta get up high to where the internal common punctum is. Um, and you, at that superior edge where it's a, kind of the frontal process, it's pretty thick bone and the angle doesn't really allow the kerosene ronger to work per, uh, properly. Then you put the probe in, tent the sac. This is a, a number 66 beaver blade, which is kind of angled really nicely. And you can start that incision way up high in the sac and pull it all the way down. And then you can use a, a ball tip seeker to really open that flap up well so you don't kind of have a sump down low, uh, even though you're opened up high. And then you put your probes in. These are kind of the thicker, uh, larger diameter uh, stents you can or don't have to necessarily time together um, and let let them uh, hang hang in the nose and remove it at anywhere from six weeks <clears throat> uh, up to six months depending on what the um, nasal pathology is. Some of our um, uh, GPA cases we'll we'll leave them in much longer. And that essentially ends the talk. Um, I've talked about a, a sink and a faucet and crying patients, but I thought I'd end with a happy patient in a tub. And that's my two-month-old. Thank you, Dr. Mahdi.